Say the example of there are some transgender people who want to not be referred to as he or she, they would prefer to be called Z or they. Mm -hmm. um, if somebody wants to be addressed like that, what does it cost me to do that? It's hard to tell because it, the devil's always in the details, but as far as I'm concerned, that's, that situation is, it's, it's not relevant to the issues, for example, that I was involved in. I didn't care if transgender people wanted to be called by some pronouns, like whatever, that's something for individuals to negotiate. When the, when the government makes that a compulsion and insists in their legislation that biological sex, uh, gender identity, gender expression and sexual proclivity very independently, it's like, no, they don't. That's wrong factually, and you're not going to compel my speech. I don't care what your damn justification is. So you see that as, am I right, in that you see that as a curtailing of freedom? It's worse than a curtailing of freedom. It's a demand that the population uses a certain kind of linguistic approach. It's, a, it's an appropriation of speech. There's no excuse for that. That never has happened once in the history of English common law, right? It's a barrier that we do not cross. Hate speech laws are bad enough. It's not like there's no hate speech. Like anyone with any sense knows that there's hate speech. Who's gonna regulate it? Who's gonna define it? And I know the answer to that. The last people in the world you would want to. And then we, we cross another barrier and we allow the government to compel speech for some hypothetically compassionate reason? No way. That's a really bad idea. What's going on everyone? Stocks for Kenny here today and welcome to Inconvenient Truths. Today, Inconvenient Truth will be about hate speech. And in a way, we're gonna be talking about political correctness, right? So hate speech is how I see it, is the idea that your speech cannot, you can, you're allowed to express your speech to the point where someone else doesn't feel offended by your speech. And in my channel, I believe I have participated under this definition in hate speech, right? When I say, hey, racism is a minor inconvenience in most black people's lives, somebody on this channel, no, not on this channel, but someone in the comment section can take that as an offensive statement. What do you mean racism is only a minor inconvenience in your life, Kenny? And you think it's in a minor inconvenience in most black people's lives? Yes, show me a law that stops me from doing what I want because of my, the color of my skin. Go. They can't. Systematic racism doesn't exist. The only thing, that, the only uh, reality of what you call systematic racism is really culture, black culture. That's what's holding you back, not systematic racism. But you want to find something else to blame. Someone can be offended by that statement, right? And my problem with hate speech laws, political correctness laws, is that it, it literally is whoever's in power gets to define what that is because all this is merely subjective. Me, I'm a poor, I'm a person that like I grew up like drill sergeant style. I had uh, when I used to play basketball, I had coaches curse at me, call me all kinds of ish. And it I guess I have too much of a thick skin that I'm not easily offended. So if I had the power to define hate speech laws, the hate speech laws will be a lot more uh, freer than if a more, let's say, sensitive person got to define hate speech laws. And you're going to see an example of this in the next next clip. We're going to go through. We're going to go eight years in the past because when I do these inconvenient truths things, I like to go use videos in the past that's already been watched uh, by millions of people already to kind of highlight how we got here today. Let's take a look. Under the guise of making a better country for all of us. And with these students, even when given a lifeline. What about the First Amendment free speech issue? Free speech, as long as it do doesn't like harm another individual, that's the way I feel it. And while it may not cause physical harm, like a lot of people, it does like hurt them emotionally. What point is free speech, the First Amendment, more valuable than not hurting someone's feelings? Where do you think that line should be? I guess it depends on the person, like what you personally believe. Like if you're okay with like not using certain words or if you feel infringed. By but see, that's the thing. Freedom of speech cannot only apply to individuals. Freedoms either apply to everyone or no one. Otherwise, ironically enough, freedoms become discriminatory. Now, as far as balancing freedoms with what people actually find offensive, the problem is nobody we interviewed actually agreed on what was truly offensive. Some of the words that you can't say, uh, fag. Both agree. Good, yeah. Good. I'll read one, you read one. Okay. okay. Gypped. Tranny. Raghead. I've never heard that one. You've never heard that one? No. Okay, you apparently don't play Call of Duty. What if I were to tell you that you just vile earlier, you didn't even realize that you used a word that's offensive that you shouldn't be saying? Oh, I did. You did. What word? Well, it offended me, and I'll tell you why. Insane. Crazy. Yeah, you can say crazy. Insane. 
These are yeah. from U of M. Yeah, you can say insane out with me. Retarded. Agreed. Illegal alien. Agreed. Yeah, you see that? So this that video was eight years ago. People were saying, you, you can't say crazy. One person said, oh, you can't say crazy. No, crazy is offensive. You know, you're making fun of people who are mentally ill, and that's not, that's offensive. Right. And I, and I kind of want to bring up some stories of today. You know, uh, you know, we went to we went uh, blast in the past. Now we're going to go bring up to current issues. This is 2023. Ricky Gervais has is outraged over the people are outraged over his Netflix special as usual. Nicky Gervais hit back at outrage over his new comedy special Armageddon after getting after becoming the number one show on Netflix. Right. 62 British co uh, comedian. And I don't want to, you know, you got you got. You guys can watch it for yourselves. I, I know a lot of you guys who are conservative. Yeah, I don't watch Netflix. So, Jake V. Ray's pointing out that I don't do that. Like, people take offenses. They're not really offended, he added. They just want to be heard. And that's the kind of the preference of the hate speech laws, right? Because this is an example of hate speech, right? AOC, she's blasted for attacking Israel and explaining her version of story of Christmas. For instance, she, this girl, this woman, I don't know how she's still a congresswoman, New York, get help. She reimagined what the birth of Jesus Christ was by politicizing it. People can say that's hate speech. You're making false comparisons and you're offending people. That's hate speech. Is that not, is, does that not fit the definition in the earlier video about, oh, hate speech is in, is in a language where you don't harm somebody because hate speech is real violence. When I look at hate speech, right? When these people define hate speech, they it's not a new concept. It's literally they're telling you what they what they want. We hate speech. Hate space speech. They don't want you they don't want you to express an opinion that they don't like. That's the reality of all this. Jordan Peterson hit it nail right on the head in the intro. Who gets to regulate that? Who gets to define that? And that person becomes uh, in in the linguistic arena a, uh, an equivalent of a tyrant oh if i say something it's not it's not hate speech but if you say if you say you hurt my feelings oh yeah, yeah, yeah. we're creating a hierarchy remember the, i did videos about the victim hierarchy if someone on the victim hierarchy says something that offends someone on the bottom oh that's fine but if the person on the bottom of that hierarchy offend the most the toppest the biggest victim of, of them all transgender people oh no that's hate speech you see you see where you're going you see, you see where we're going with this these word games, these linguistic games that we're playing with all these rules, we're creating another form of discrimination in a way. Because whoever's in power gets to define what hate speech is. And if if power gets to justify what's hate speech or not, we all be, it, it doesn't become a game of truth. It doesn't become a game of understanding, debate, discussion. It becomes a game of power. And that can get violent real quick. So I want to end off this video with this um, with this last clip from Jordan Peterson and how he dives more into uh, regulating hate speech. What is hate speech? And then I give my final thoughts after the clip. Let's take a look. Is there such a thing as hate speech? Yes, obviously. People say terrible things, reprehensible things, mm -hmm. quasi criminal things even all the time. Brutal. And some of them cause a lot of trouble. So the idea that there's hateful speech, it's like, yeah, okay, that's self-evident, no problem. Well, let's regulate it. Okay, fair enough, because it's hateful. You know, maybe we'd rather that there wasn't any of it. Okay, no problem. Who defines hate? Well, we'll worry about that later. It's like, no, you won't. That's actually the problem. Here's the answer to who defines hate. Those people that you would least want to have define it. That will be the inevitable consequence of the legislation because sensible people won't have anything to do with that. Like people who are power mad will gravitate to that domain to make an ethical case to exercise their controlling power over the language of other people. You now, and I've had journalists say, well, what makes you think that your right to free speech trumps the right of someone to not be offended? And I think that's really the level of our political discourse. Okay, so we'll run a little thought experiment. So, I'm talking to one person, I'm talking to you, and the rule is I don't get to offend you. Okay, maybe we can still have a discussion about something difficult. But let's say I'm talking to 10 people and, and about an important thing. Now I have to make sure that I don't say anything, despite, despite the fact that this is an important and contentious issue, that I don't say anything that offends even one of those 10 people. Okay, maybe I can even manage that. What if I'm talking to a thousand people? 
There's going to be someone in that thousand people. There's going to be someone who's offended at the mere fact that I exist. So it's an impossible standard. Uh, hey, <clears throat> I couldn't say it better myself. It is an impossible standard, right? And I kind of want to dive in some of the things that he got brought up, but I want to end it off with an analogy, right? Here's an analogy I want to end off with the inconvenient truth. Imagine that if we live in a society where murder is subjective. Okay, you can kill somebody as long as they're under the age of 25. Okay, so for you, oh, no, you can't, you could kill someone if they're nine months old. You can kill somebody if they're only two weeks old. Okay, well, yeah, that's permissible. Oh, no, you killed someone else 58 years old. Some people say, hey, like, that's fine, right? Because the, the, the problem with regulating hate speech is where's the line? Right. In a in, 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 in a in a in a societal level, the line has to be visible. Right. And this is the analogy I'm going with. For me, for instance, I say, hey, you're not allowed to cross a line. OK. And I explicitly put the line where you can't cross it. If you cross it, you go to jail. It's visible. I, I intentionally made I made the line in the sand and you're like, OK, I will not cross that line. If I cross that line, I do it knowing that this breaks the law. This is the next person. This is who I'll call the sensitive people when it comes to regulating hate speech. They'll tell you the same thing I told you. Don't cross the line. And they just look at you. You're going to ask the question, hey, where's the line? Oh, he said, oh, don't worry. You haven't crossed it. What? How am I supposed to know if I cross the line if you don't like if you don't show us where the line is? Oh, don't worry about it. You we we all we all know what hate speech is. We don't need to articulate it. What happens? You're pretty much at the mercy of that person's judgment. And this is what's going on with hate speech laws, pol political correctness laws. Eventually, it's going to backfire because if someone's playing the same game, OK, you just cross the line right now. Hey, I didn't even move. No, no, you cross the line and you go to jail off of what? Someone's word over someone's uh, feelings. And this is how I would define uh, laws and restrictions. Right. For instance, you can't say fire or bomb on a plane. Why? There's context. But you know what the words are. You know what you can't say. But what happens if someone say, hey, uh, you're not allowed to offend other people? It's the same analogy as the someone hasn't defined what the line is. And you, it's impossible not to, it, it, you have to tr walk on eggshells, essentially. And that's the kind of culture that hate speech and regular uh, regu regulating speech causes. I'll end this off with this. A right is something you can do without the consent of other people. Is hate speech a right? No, it's not. Under, the, under my definition, hate speech is not a right. Because why? Because you need the consent of the other person. If the other person feel like, I want to say bomb, okay, then you take the consequences. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable with the consequences. Okay, go to jail. But you can't compel him. You can't compel him or you can't tell him not to do something because that requires what? His consent. And if you want something that requires the consent of another person, that's a privilege. And I think in our political discussion, we have gotten so loose with definitions. We got so loose with our words that now one word has double meaning depending on who sees it. We made things too subjective in our language. And I think it's time to get back to a more rigid standard when we come to definitions. I think that's what will cure a lot of this hate speech, political correctness bull-ish. But I digress. Let me know your thoughts. Uh, what you guys think about hate speech laws. You agree, disagree, or you're kind of in the middle. I'd like to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And I thank you guys for watching the, the, uh, the, I thank you guys for watching Inconvenient Truths, and I hope to see you on the next one. Peace.